Goravani Pucharina, Nirvise Shashunya Vadi Tatsatya Desha Karana. What's the text number? <laughs> 17. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter Number 10 Entitled Deliverance of the Yamala Arjuna Trees this morning, text number 17. Daridrashyaiva yujyante Sadava samadashana Shadbi shinoti tam Tashyam Tata Arad Vishud Vishudyati Dredrashyaiva Yujyante Sadava Samadashana Shad Shad Bishinoti Tam Karsham Tata Arad Vishyati Dredya Shiva Yujyante Sadava Samadashina Shadvi Shinoti Tam Karsham Tata Aradvi Shudhyati
that it is of a person who is poverty stricken. Eva, indeed, Yudjante may easily associate. Sadavaha, simply persons. Samadashana, although sadhus are equal to everyone, to the poor and the take advantage of their association. by the association of such saintly persons. Shinoti reduces come the original cause of material suffering. Tarsham, the desire for material enjoyment. Tata, thereafter, Arat, very soon, Vishuddhyati, his material contamination is cleansed off. Translation, saintly persons may freely associate with those who are poverty stricken, but not with those who are rich. association with saintly persons very soon becomes uninterested in material desires and the dirty things within the core of his heart are cleansed away purport by his divine grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada it is said Mahat vichalam rinam grihinam dina chaitasam. From Bhagavatam 10, Canto 8, Chapter, verse number 4. The only business of a saintly person or sannyasi, a person in the renounced order, is to preach Krishna consciousness. Sadhus saintly persons want to preach to both the poor and the rich, but the poor take more advantage of the sadhu's preaching than the rich do. A poor man receives sadhus very quickly, offers them obeisances, and tries to take advantage of their presence, whereas a rich man keeps a big greyhound dog at his door so that no one can enter his house. He posts a sign saying, beware of dog and avoids the association of saintly persons, whereas a poor man keeps his door open for them and thus benefits by their association more than a rich man does. Because Narada Muni, in his previous life, was the poverty-stricken son of a maid servant, he got the association of saintly persons and later became the exalted Narada Muni. This was his eternal, this was his actual experience. Therefore, he is now comparing the position of a poor man with that of a rich man. Satam prasanga mama viri sambido bhavanti ritkara narasayana kata taj joshanad asha pavarga vatmani shradara tir bhakti anukramishati. If one gets the advantage of association with saintly persons, by their instruction one becomes more and more purified of material desires. Krishna Bahir Mukahaya Bhogavanchakari Naikatas Naikataste Mayatari Japa Diyadari from Prima Vivata. Material 
material life means that one forgets Krishna and that one and that one increases one's desire for sense gratification. But if one receives the advantage of instruction from saintly persons and forgets the importance of material desires, one is automatically purified. Cheto Dharpanam Marjanam Baba Mahadavagni Nirvapanam Shikshastikam 1 Unless the core of the materialistic person's heart is purified, he cannot get rid of the pangs of Baba Mahadavagni, the blazing fire of material existence. Oma Jnana Timirandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dodati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrutatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Vaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavnishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada begins the purport to this verse here quoting a previous verse from chapter 8 describing how uh, Garga Acharya came to visit the home of Nanda Maharaj. Garga Acharya had been told by Vasudeva to go there and do the name-giving ceremony for Krishna and Balaram. So when Garga Acharya came there, Nanda Maharaj greeted him like that because he knew Gan Garga Acharya or Garga Muni is renounced person. He has no material interest. Did not come to get anything material. Just like when Vishwamitra came to the home of Maharaj Dasara. Yesterday we were celebrating Ram Nomi. So there was a pastime there how Vishwamitra came to the home of Maharaj Dasara. He was, he had come to get the help of Lord Rama to come and kill some rakshasas for him. Vishwamitra considered it's not proper for me to kill them. I could kill them myself, but I'm a brahmana. I shouldn't do it. Killing should be done by kshatriyas. So he came there to the palace to get Lord Ram. And when he came to the palace, then Maharaj Dasarath greeted him very nicely. He said, oh great soul, who is engaged in conquering over death. This is the business of those in the renounced life, those who have dedicated their life for the service of the Lord. They're engaged in conquering over death. Right? We don't want to be caught in this um, at the end of the purport, Prabhupada quotes from the Shikshastikam, this Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, right? This uh, blazing fire of material existence. Material life is like a blazing fire. Yes, very troublesome. 
who caused the fire, the forest fire, who caused it? Well, just some dry wood rubs together and you get a fire. It's no one's fault. It just happens. The nature of the material world is therefore troublesome, full of problems, full of so many different anxieties and pro conflicts and pro so many uh, troubles trying to get along in this material world. So it's important that there has to be a class of people who will show the right example to get out of how to get out of this material perplexity. So we need to get the association of saintly people. In the Srimad Bhagavatam we hear about Sukadeva Goswami. It's described how he came or rather he 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 would come to people's homes to beg some milk, but his real purpose in coming was not just simply to get some milk from their cow, but the real purpose of coming to the home was to give them enlightenment. That kind of association is very, very important. That is the real business of those Krishna consciousness, particularly those in the renounced order of life who have dedicated everything for the service of Krishna. That they just want to discuss topics of Krishna. They have no other business. They're not worried about filling their belly and they're not worried about comfortable living. They can lay down anywhere and sleep. In Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, we read about Sukadeva Goswami de describing how he uh, can drink the water from the river, you can lay down, you need a pillow, just use your arms, rest on your arms, you don't need a pillow. And find torn clothes, torn cloth laying in the streets to cover the body. Like the, this was uh, Sukadeva Goswami was speaking like this. <laughs> so of course it's very extreme, but the principle is there that devotees are not much concerned with their material situation because they know it's always it's only temporary. We're only here in this world for some time not very long. We want to make the best use, therefore, of this human form of life. And to help us make the best use of this human form of life, we need to hear from the scriptures and we need to take advantage of the association of those who not only read the scriptures but also practice them and apply them. Right. One, on one level, you read the books, and on, not, on the higher level, we have to practice what is in the books. So Prabhupada quotes this nice verse from uh, third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Satam Prasanga Mamavirya Sambhido, right? Lord Kapila Dev speaking to Mother Devahuti. Because Devahuti, his mother, was in anxiety. She was also confused what to do. She had been enjoying her material life for some time and then her husband had gone away from home and renounced everything. Of course when he renounced everything he left her with a child and that child happened to be an incarnation of the personality of Godhead, Lord Kapila. So she approached Lord Kapila for guidance. She had been told by Lord Brahma that she would have a child who is an incarnation of the Lord. So she understood the divine nature of her son and she approached him for guidance 
what to do in her anxiety, in her perplexity, how to solve her problems, what should she, she, should she be doing. So Lord Kapila, they've instructed her about the importance of attachment for a sadhu. Lord Kapila explains to Devahuti that the attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest bondage. But when that same attachment is directed towards the transcendent, transcendence, then it's the cause of freedom, liberation. So Lord Kapila Dev tells his mother that you have to take advantage, get the association of sadhus, become attached to a sadhu. And Lord Kapila then goes on to describe how to recognize who is actually the sadhu. And he describes uh, to the, the qualities or the ornaments of the sadhu. Tatikshava karunika suridam sarvadehinam ajata satrava shantu sadhava sadhu bhushana sadhu bhushana the ornaments of a sadhu right the kind of people you want to associate with are people who can display these kind of qualities tatikshava tolerance they can tolerate different conditions of life not only the heat and the cold, they can tolerate being in any kind of condition, any kind of place. It is said for the one who has taken shelter of Lord Narayan, he does not see any difference between heaven and hell and liberation, right? Narayana parasarve nakutas vibhyate swarga Apavarga Narakesh Vapitu Yata Darshana. For one who is surrendered to Lord Narayan, Swarga, heaven, Apavarga, liberation, and Narak, hell. It's all the same. Vapitu Yata Darshana. He sees everywhere equally. Because he sees everywhere the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada was in America sitting in New York, he said, I am not in New York. I am always in Vrindavan because I'm always thinking of Krishna. So Prabhupada had that kind of consciousness. So Narada Muni is describing here how there are rich people and there are poor people. And it's much easier for the sadhu to be able to associate with the poor people than with the rich people, because rich people tend to keep themselves away from other people. People who have wealth are always worried that somebody's going to come to take their money away from them, to steal their money. They think somebody's coming, oh, they want my money. Right? You, we know previously, when we were doing life membership work in different places in the world, we'd approach some of the wealthy businessmen. And it's sometimes very difficult to get to meet the big, the big wealthy people. Because, of course, for one reason, they're, they're busy working with their business. Yeah. But the other reason is also they think, Somebody's coming to see me, They're, they want my money. They want to get my money from me. So they keep themselves protected. They have their secretaries and their different servants around them. And they will come and say, no, he's busy today. No, he's too busy. He can't see you today. Come another time. Like this. Very difficult. Prabhupada describes sometimes even they keep a big dog. <laughs> so Prabhupada also had his experiences because Prabhupada had to also go and meet people just like Prabhupada went and he was able to get people to sponsor the printing of the Bhagavatam 
before he went to America. I think part of the money for printing the Bhagavatam was given by Srimati Morariji, the, the president of the Sindhi shipping company. And of course she also sponsored Prabhupada's passage to go to America. So there are some generous people, there are some kind people, but generally the wealthy people are difficult to approach. Even in the Christian Bible, I remember there's a statement in the Christian Bible, they say it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than it is for an elephant to go through an eye of a needle. So, <laughs> even and then Lord Chaitanya has also said in the Shikshastikam, Nadanam Najanam na Sundarin Kavitamva Jagadisha Kamai. He said, I don't want wealth. We don't, wh why did Lord Chaitanya want wealth? Because he knows it will, when you have a lot of wealth, it attracts people who are interested in the wealth. They attract the, the people who are materially inclined, they're attracted. Oh, you have a lot of money, they want to be your friend. They don't want to be your friend, they want, they want to associate with your money. They want to enjoy the money. So, wealth creates a lot of problems for people. Therefore, the renounced order of life is based on accepting poverty, being poverty-stricken. This is a good quality because then you can simply take shelter of the Supreme Lord. We have nothing else to worry about. There was a, remember that one mu musician, there was one American musician, uh, sing, he wrote songs, I remember as a young person hearing his song, he said, if you haven't got anything, then you don't have anything to lose. <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense to us also. But we, in Krishna consciousness, we have to also work very hard raising money to use it for the service of Krishna. So it's not that money is bad, but what's bad with it is how we use it. If we think it's, it's for our own sense enjoyment, then that's a serious problem. That's a big entanglement, a big attachment. We have to be willing to understand that all the wealth actually belongs to Krishna. Just like Wealth is persona in under the it's under the charge of Mother Lakshmi, and Mother Lakshmi is the consort of Lord Narayan. Now another name of Lakshmi is Chanchala. Chanchala meaning restless. So when you get money, it's very difficult to keep it. It comes into your hand and the quickly it goes again. So when we do get wealth, it's important to use it for the service of Krishna. Because if we don't use it for the service of Krishna, it will be taken, it won't stay with us for very long, it will be taken away by lawyers, and doctors, and other different expenses which come up in material life. So it's very important for us to want to dedicate everything in the service of Krishna. So Narada Muni is considering all this and he's thinking that if these two sons of Kuvera, if they were not so rich, it would be better for them. To take away their wealth will be good for them. It will give them a chance to think more about the purpose of life and about how to, how to awaken their spiritual consciousness. Prabhupada quotes this other verse by Jagadananda Pandit, Krishna Bahir Mukha, Bhagavan Chakori, that, uh, for, that 
we come into the material world and we forget Krishna. We, we bahir mukha. We are attracted by the material energy instead of understanding who is the proprietor and who this material energy actually belongs to. We think that we can enjoy it, that it's for our pleasure. And of course, very soon we lose it. And we, or we become caught up competing with others. We, become, we spend time envying other people. We think, oh, that person, they have so much money, I don't have so much. Oh, that person, he's so opulent and I'm so poor. And in this way, we spend a lot of time lamenting about our material situation. But we should actually see the good side of these things. Just like we can understand, for the poor person, there's some advantages. The advantage is that it's much easier for him to get the association of saintly people. It's much easier for them to give up their time and go to attend the programs, to hear the classes, and to take part in the festivals. Rich people, they're so busy, they have so much to do, they have so many worries. They don't even have time to eat properly, often. People who are very wealthy, they don't get proper meals, they don't get proper food, they're not regulated in their habits because it's all business and they're always thinking how to increase their wealth, how to get more money. I was in one man's office one time in Hong Kong. He was a very wealthy Indian businessman. And while I was sitting there, he said, just a minute, I've just called the bank. So he picked up the phone and he started to speak to the person in the bank, he said, just tell me what I need to do to make more money. <laughs> yeah. This, he'd already got so much money, he could have retired long ago. And he had sons, he had children there to do the business too. But still, he's working, trying to get more money. And then the heart attack comes and he has to undergo surgery, big operation, spend again, then he worries about it, spend so much money like this. So this is the life of the materialistic person. But the poorer people are happier often. It, there was some survey done and they, they said the happiest people in the world are in Bangladesh. Now Bangladesh the Bangladesh people are not the wealthiest people in the world, but they can be among the happiest people in the world. Living in a village, eating natural food, often food which they grow themselves, much healthier lifestyle than people living in a big city who never see the light of the day, never see the sunlight, they spend the whole day traveling in the underground, then working in the big office with all artificial lighting and air conditioning, so they never get fresh air. And then when they eat food, it's all fast food, something which is heated up quickly, nothing fresh. But people who live in the village, they live simply, they get fresh water to drink and good vegetables, often which they can grow without chemicals. It can, nowadays, if you want something organic, people have to pay more of it. But in the village, people grow organic food. They've been growing it organic for thousands of years. That's one of the corruptions of the modern society. You want something natural, you should pay more for it. it. It should be less, but people have to pay more. 
Prabhupada said, the poor people are healthier than the rich people. The rich people often end up with diabetes. And the poor people, they're eating simpler but healthier meals. A natural lifestyle. They lay down at night and they can sleep. They can go to sleep because they often walk. But the wealthy people, they never walk anywhere. They never get any exercise. When they want to sleep, they have to take medicine. They have to take some tablet to sleep at night. They have to take med so many different medicines in the course of the day. Medicine to help them eat. Medicine to help stop their hair from going gray. <laughs> so many things like this. They take medicines for everything. But people living a simple life, poorer people, they don't depend on all of these things. They can live naturally, live healthy, simple, working hard, walking, walking around up and down and getting exercise. It's there. But nowadays people have to do so many things. They have yoga classes to get people to just exercise because nobody does any exercise. Everything is machines. Wash the clothes. We have a washing machine. Put everything in the washing machine. Prabhupada didn't like these kind of things. Electric razors to shave the face. All of these things. Prabhupada said these things are not necessary. Keep the living, the lifestyle simple. Right? We practice simple living and high thinking. So we have the highest philosophy and we have to apply this philosophy by a simple lifestyle. Living simply, of course we have nice prasadam, we have also kirtan every day. In the kirtan, chanting and dancing. We get an exercise in this way. <laughs> We get our exercise, taking part in the kirtan. We don't have to worry about trying to do all of these other things. So Krishna consciousness is giving us this nice lifestyle to help us benefit. And we have also the best association. So we want to also give this association as Prabhupada explains, we don't only preach to the poor people. We have to all think how to give Krishna consciousness everywhere, to everyone. When the devotees, I heard, when, when the devotees started uh, traveling down the Ganga, they had the, the, the boat and they were going down the Ganga, they were stopping in places that they would select the poorer villages. But Prabhupada said, when you do food distribution, you should do it for everyone. We want to give prasadam every... Because the rich people also need Krishna's mercy. Of course, it's harder to approach them, but we don't just only think always to give food for the poor. We want to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. We are a spiritual society, not just a social welfare organization, not just a, a free food kitchen, but we want to give the highest thing, Krishna consciousness. So by distributing prasadam, just like here Prabhupada said, when we give prasadam, there should also be kirtan, there should be the chanting of the holy name so that people can also hear the holy name. Very important that people can understand the power of the holy name and, and then they can appreciate more the food which they're being given, that this is also the mercy of Krishna. So we want to understand, we want to always be thinking how to give Krishna consciousness to others how to meet people, how to find them. 
One time the devotees were doing a program, it was somewhere in Rajasthan, and the king, one of the Maharajas of that place, had invited the devotees to, their, to, the, to his home for a program. And Prabhupada was also there. So Prabhupada told the devotee, he told, I think it was Hansadura sitting beside Prabhupada, he told Hansadura, he said, ask him to purchase a set of our books. So the devotee stood up and began, he gave a talk about the books and Prabhupada and, and he told the, the king, the Maharaja, said, you know, it would be very good for you to take a set of these books for your library, keep them in your home. But the Maharaja said, no, it's okay, I have enough books, I don't need any books, thank you very much. So afterwards the devotee asked Prabhupada, he said, did I say anything wrong, Prabhupada? Because he didn't get the books. And Prabhupada said, no, no, it's okay. He said, you spoke nicely. He said, but, he said, one who knows the value of my books, they will purchase. And the devotee said, Prabhupada, why didn't you speak? Why did you have me speak? Why didn't you speak yourself? If you'd spoken, maybe it'd been better. But Prabhupada said, no, he said, if I had have spoken and he did not take the books, then it would have been very bad for him. And if you refuse the sadhu, very bad. So Prabhupada was thinking of the welfare of the king. So he did not personally ask the king to get the books. He had the d disciple do it. Interesting point, that if somebody does not fulfill the desires of the sadhu, then it's not very good for them. So we have to be very conscious, you know, careful how we approach people, try to encourage them, make it possible for them that they can take up Krishna consciousness. Sometimes when we would go to ask people to be life members, we would just go and first of all we would say, Mr. Mr. Jo Mr. Agarwal or whatever, we want you, we don't want you, your money, we want you to give your life. We want you to come with us, leave everything, come with us and travel and preach and we will distribute the holy name. You know, because the man would be saying, you know, I'm also a devotee of Krishna, I chant Hare Krishna. So before asking him for any wealth, we say, we want you to give your life. Come with us, let's go, leave everything. And then we say, oh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> right? So the best is if people can give their life. But if they cannot give their life, then let them give their wealth. But some people, they're very attached to their wealth or they may not have any wealth, they cannot give wealth. Okay, so then they can give their intelligence, use their intelligence for the service of Krishna. And if they have no intelligence, then let them use their tongue to chant Hare Krishna and to take prasadam. So with their life, wealth, intelligence and words, it's a duty of all, one, all living entities to try to serve the Supreme Lord according to their ability. Hare Krishna. Any questions?
So a devotee is asking, because a new devotee had come and she was told by other devotees that the work which you're doing is not proper. She was doing some buying and selling, right? But devotees were saying, no, you have to work hard. It's not proper what you're doing. You're just cheating or you're making easy money. That's not good. So, we've never heard this before. There are four different varnas and in each varna there are different duties. So, one of the varnas is Vaishya. Vaishyas do trade as well as cow protection and farming. So, trading, buying and selling, yes, this is proper. Some people are able to do this very successfully. And if one can make a living for themselves, then there's no harm. Of course, we encourage them that you're making a living and if you're making a substantial living, a good profit, then you can also contribute some of your wealth for the service of Krishna. Some people have good karma, good karma in the sense that they can make money very easily. And some other people, they have to work very hard to make money. And sometimes even although they work hard, they get very less money. And so, we shouldn't envy other people. If somebody by nature, if they're able to make money easily, it's, so, it's not there, it's not a problem, we're not against that. But it will be beneficial for them if they can use some of their hard-earned wealth or easy-earned wealth, if they use it for Krishna consciousness, then they get the highest benefit. So the question is that people sometimes say, I'm going to make money for Krishna, but in course of time, they lose the association of devotees. So this is a serious problem, that we become so much attached and so much involved in earning wealth and making money, that we have no time to practice our Krishna consciousness and we have no time to go and associate with devotees. So it's important uh, to keep in touch with devotees. We do need association. And we need also to have senior devotees who will take an interest in all the devotees. And if we see somebody's not coming, not associating, we should go and find out what's happened, where did they go, what's wrong. Just like we were reading here in the purport, how Garga Acharya came to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And I was telling Vishwamitra came to the palace of Maharaj Dasara. So similarly, we have to go to the people. If we, especially if we see people are not coming to our association, we want to go and find out what's happening. Of course, now at this time, at this particular time, very special circumstances, it's not so easy for us to go around, but we should have some means of contacting people. So call them up, give them a call. I'm spending a lot of time here in Mayapur, calling as many people as I can to keep in touch with them and to ask them how are they, what are they doing, and what's the situation in their place. It's a very nice opportunity to keep in touch with more people. 
because often I don't get that, that kind of time. But just now, with everything closed up and stopped, it's an opportunity for me to reach out more, to think of more people and to contact them. Because we know material life is like that. It's very absorbing. They have many duties, many things to do. And then they forget about Krishna consciousness. So it's the duty of our devotees to try to contact them and try to encourage them and keep them in Krishna consciousness and give them Krishna consciousness. Mm. Okay. No more questions? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Premanande. Is it all right for Devahuti to be attached to her son? Is it enough? Because she's a woman without her husband, so is it all right for her to be attached to her son? Does Devahuti need to associate with other sadhus or is it enough for her just to associate with her son? Well, we have to understand that Devahuti's son is not just an ordinary son, but he is the Supreme Lord and he has come to speak this Sankhya philosophy, to give this knowledge of Sankhya. So for his mother, it's all right because her son is the Supreme Lord. And it, Srimad Bhagavatam goes on to describe how Devahuti went back to Godhead, that her son has a planet there in the spiritual world, and Devahuti is there also serving her son. All right. That he has his own planet in the, in the spiritual sky, and Deva, Devahuti is there serving him. So although she was attached to her son, you have to remember that Devahuti was left alone. That after Lord Kapila had instructed Devahuti, then he left. He didn't stay with his mother. Now he could have. In fact, you may think, well, it's a duty, it's the son. You should stay with the mother and protect. But no, Lord Kapila left and he traveled. He went all around, followed the Ganga, went up to the source of the Ganga, came back down, made his ashram at Ganga Sagar here in Bengal. So Lord Kapila resides there eternally at Ganga Sagar. Kapila Muni's ashram is there. Why didn't he stay with his mother? Because she was already perfect. When one is perfect in Krishna consciousness, then you don't need the association anymore. She was in the perfect stage of Krishna consciousness, totally absorbed in thinking of Lord Kapila. And she knew her son to be the Supreme Lord. That's why she could inquire from him. Why could she, why she could come before him and ask all the questions. 
Um, you can see the picture, how it's shown. Devahuti's down there and her son's sitting up. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, Devamrita Swami. Devamrita Swami was telling, because <laughs> he was telling, he went home to see his mother. And his, his, his mother had been reading the books. And so he was sitting there on a big seat in their living room. His mother came and sat on the floor. And she said, is this how it's done? <laughs> she said, is this how it's done? Yeah. It's, so it's, it's unusual because we think, you know, parents should be up. The, the parents are senior most, the child is junior. But Lord Kapila is the Supreme Lord. So he was giving knowledge to his mother. And his mother became pure devotee. She also went back to Godhead. Okay. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.